Hello everyone and welcome to my new class and today our topic is polymers. You are most welcome to the part 2 of polymers. If you haven't checked out my part 1 video, I prefer you to please watch how to always be able to score good marks and full marks in this lesson, the tips and tricks and also about how to learn lesson in general, about the syllabus, about the textbook and many more interesting facts and mainly why to watch my videos. Okay. We also learn about talking about content, we learn about what is polymer, what is a monomer, what is polymerization and we saw the three different uh, polymer structure, those were polythene, polyvinyl chloride and nylon disc number 6. And today's chapter focuses about classification of polymers. Classification means, you know what it means, grouping the polymers. Of course there are many polymers around us. We're going to group them into different categories based on what suits best for them. And the first which you're going to have for this is classification based on source. And I'm sure you have learned when you were in middle school about natural resources and man-made. So you uh, classify them based on the source they're coming from. And similarly for polymers, you have the same thing. What you're going to learn here is a very simple thing. These are more about understanding and learning it and memorizing it. So this one definition and uh, examples. So if you know them, you're ready to master this concept as well. So let's get started. So first we have is natural polymer. What are these? The polymer which occur in nature, that is plants and animals, is called natural polymers. Examples are cellulose, rubber, resin, starch and proteins. Number two comes synthetic polymer. Now what are these? The polymer which are prepared in laboratories. Very simple and to the point. Examples are synthetic rubber like Buna S, synthetic fiber like Nanosis, comma 6, plastic like polythene or polyvinyl chloride. Okay. And third comes semi synthetic. Semi means like when you have the natural polymer, you can mix with something with it and make a new one. Okay. So these are the polymers in which are obtained by making some modification in the natural polymer by artificial means as you can see here examples are cellulose nitrate cellulose rye acid and rayon so basically rayon is like a cotton but it's made up of semi this whole part you have seen just now have learned them as it is it's very simple to understand simple to memorize talking about examples i advise you to learn all the examples not just two or three but all of them they're very simple like cellulose jabber and so on now for this you may have doubt like they have given something in the bracket. What is this? Is this an alternative name? No. See, when I say synthetic rubber, I mean to say in general, rubber in all. But when I say Buna S, I'm talking about one example of it. So let's say I talk about fruits. Example is apple, same way. Synthetic rubber, example is Buna S. So I want you to consider this whole thing as one example and learn it. When you do that, the examiner will know that you know what the topic is and even the example. So, for first name, a first classification based on source, we have three types, natural, synthetic, and semi-synthetic. I want to learn all of them in the same order, definition, and example. Okay. Now, let's see how would they ask questions from here. They would simply ask questions like, what are natural and synthetic polymers, and give two examples of each type. They have said two, but because now we have, from this year, I mean, like since last year, we have 20 marks for MCQ, so you can never say. So learn all the examples, they're very simple and to the point. Next we have a habits and basic structure of polymer. And we have talked about um, polymer as a linear way, but there could be of different other types as well. There are mainly three different types of it. These are linear, branching and cross-linked. Lesson number one. Before I talk about number one, let's talk about how are they ask questions based on this. They may ask questions by saying, how are the pl uh, polymers classified on the basis of structure? As simple as that, to the point and directly from the context. This could either be a two marks question or even one marks at a time. If it's a one mark, you simply write down the uh, titles, I mean the, the three different types and examples, enough. If it's a three marks question, you have to write down definition as well. Okay, so with this you have solved one more index question from it, NCRT, very simple, now let's see the answer. Number one we have is linear polymer. The word says these are the linear ones, like how you have seen it. The polymer are in which the monomer units are linked to one another to form long linear chain. These chains are closely packed in space, okay. We have two examples only, high density polythene and polyvinyl chloride. 
so you're gonna see as I have made all my notes or everything is from the NCR text for yourself but I have made it modified in much better way it's easy for you to memorize the lines and definition and you're gonna soon gonna see in the following slide as well that the starting lines I have made the same for almost all of them so it's easy for you to remember them well you know so when you have the same starting line is good okay so let's see the so along with definition and example to example you also learn the structure of it very simple structure from the text itself is going to be linear like this okay let's draw three curved lines linear put it in a nice box and this is your linear polymer you may have doubt here now why is it curvy see when the polymer they form bond they form bond like this okay so representation of this won't be as a straight line it will be a bit of a curvy line like when it represents the polymer and how they form so don't you worry just follow the text way itself and text will have given this way so that's how it's going to be one question which i had when i was studying was see we learned about polyvinyl chloride to have a structure like um ch double bond ch and down cl isn't it so meaning we're having CL down and forming a bond like that. Then how come it's able to form a linear bond? Linear means compressed together. They're also having high density. Yeah? When they are having very uh, less space that they're closely packed together. Then how is it possible for polyvinyl chloride? Even though we have CL, uh, which is much bigger size compared to other uh, halogen atoms in this group. When you compare that to a polymer, the size still cons is considered small. And because it's considered to be very small compared to the long polymer chain which you have and thus it's able to form a linear shape as simple as that okay next we have is a branch chain polymer as the word says it's a branch chain so the polymers are in which the monomer units are linked to one another to form long chain with some branch chains of different lengths i told you the first few words are same they're here is same like the first one it's easy for you to remember the point and just note down what the difference is before was long linear chain now it's long chain with some branches of different lengths only one example that's low density polythene for this the structure is very simple first you draw like this one curve another curve you could of course draw it anyway to show a branch chain but because you want to follow textbook as a holy book so you are Always you will get full marks in BCUSC board exams. So you want to get it precise to the book because whenever the examiner checks your paper, the answer sheet is from the book itself. So you have to make sure that your answer seems 100% correct. Okay. And then you can have like this kind of a branch here, like this way, and one branch here. And that's how they have shown in the book, and the same thing you can follow as well. So for second time as well, you have one definition, one example, and one diagram. Okay, moving on. Third comes cross-linked or network polymer. It is also known as network polymers. Now these are what? These are polymers which are linked uh, to one another form three dimensional dimensions. Three elements, they're 3D shape. They're coming 3D, okay? 3D. Fine. These are usually formed from bifunctional and trifunctional monomers. numbers. Now what this means? Let me tell you. Bifunctional poly uh, polymer means which have two functional groups in its every monomer. And trifunctional polymer means the one having three functional groups with every monomer. It simply means as simple as that. Let's say I have a monomer over here in front of me. Some carbon chain like this. If it has two functional groups, let's say OH and let's say over here, uh, what else I can have? X, a halogen. This is example of a bifunctional polymer. If I have one mole, it's some A or B or Y. That is another example of trifunctional polymer. So you can see what it basically means. Very simple to understand and very easy. Okay. So they contain strong covalent bond between the linear polymer chain. So they're kind of covalent bonds. Okay. Fine. Examples are two of them. Milamine formaldehyde resign and bakelite. The word uh, resign means polymer. It is same like saying polymer. This is another name for it. Okay. Another word for it basically. We haven't seen the structure of these two so far, we're going to see it soon, so don't you worry. Now, what about the diagram for this? Let's check it out. It's very simple as well. It's similar to brown but a bit more complex way because it's 3D shape. So first you draw the two curves as you have done before like this way. There you go. Then draw one way in the center. Okay. And one over here. Then one over here. And one here. And you might say, why are you copying from the book? See, 
I understand if you want to get them to make it random like this we also you know some random lines or simply something like this something like this something like this something like this you can make it anyway but to make it you know like so the examiner will think in the board exam they won't pause for another second to see if it's right or wrong okay so for that reason it's always good to just follow the book's uh, diagram which is best for, for you all even though you have understood crosslink could be any pattern in general isn't it so one definition two examples and one diagram moving on now next is in base of polymerization mode now what the word mode means types so to tell you in advance, basically there are two types of polymerization in general. Okay, we can learn about. Number one is called addition. Polymers or polymerization, addition, okay, it's N. Other one is called condensation. Find them. Again, under addition, you have two more types. You can talk about them in details right in the moment. But for now, I'm just showing you how it is branching out. One is called homopolymer. Oops, sorry, H O M O homo polymer. Okay, other one is called copolymer. So, in general, the mode of formation is branched like this you have addition, condensation, homo, and copolymer. Okay, let's see first addition. The polymers are formed by polymerization of monomers containing double or triple bond, is called addition polymer. Okay, this is what the textbook says exactly word to word. Hmm, pretty understandable, but in simple word, in my word, in what I feel so, it simply means one thing. That is when two or more monomers combine to form one polymer, it's called addition polymers. Okay, well, this means that either the two or more uh, monomers could be of same type like ethane, ethane. They combine together to form polythene. Or they could be like nine of common sticks where they have one type of um add one type of monomer and another type of monomer combined together to form a uh, form okay one more second to tell you nine six comma six won't be coming under addition polymers because in nine six comma six when they combine to form one single product they're forming one polymer along with a water so you have a side product as well but here they're saying the two things let's say a and b the a and b should combine and only should give you c nothing else more than that only one product should give you so in this case polythene and polyvinyl chloride are the best example but nine sigma six comma six is not nylon six comma six is not the example for this okay let's keep that in mind so hope you understood what it basically means that when two or more monomers of same type or different type or whichever form combined to form one polymer is called addition polymers okay Example polythene and polypropene. Find we have seen polythene, we're going to see polypropene soon as well. There are two types homopolymer and copolymers. The question could be something like distinguish between the terms homopolymer and copolymer and give an example of each. And that is how they could ask question in exam. Another question from the text itself. Now let's find the answer for this. Okay, first comes homopolymer. The addition polymers which are obtained by polymerization of a single type of monomer of single type okay so best example polythene and polypropene single type is what one type of monomer so it, it cannot be like two different it should be one type okay so let's now see polypropene let's talk about polypropene how we can get polypropene from propene okay if we do know the propene structure would be CH2 double bond CH single bond CH3 but we want this this way because we want this to come down so our structure won't be this one at all it's gonna be different it's gonna be let me show you here CH2 double bond CH and down CL so our monomer propene n times after polymerization process Cell so give us CH2 single bond CH down Cl3 branched out and whole N and this is our polypropene. Simple and easy, isn't it? Copolymer. So here the addition polymer which are obtained by polymerization of two or more monomeric species. In homopolymer 
only one type of monomer was been used, but here we can use two or more more species. For example, so buna S. In this, we have two monomers been used, buta one common three diene, and another one is styrene. They both are used to form the product. Let's see how do we get it. It's very important one. Let's see. Let's see how do we get buna S. Now for buna S, as we by now know, we have two different monomers. Number one we have is called buta 1 comma 3 diene. Okay. Now this one going to be structure will be CH2 double bond CH single bond CH double bond CH2. Wonderful. N times. Okay. Now how are you getting this? If you have learned the nomenclature and how it's been named, you'll easily know that. Let's come to this as 1, 2, 3, 4. This means buta means 4 carbons. You have 4 carbons aligning a linear form. In the first and third position, we have diene means we have two double bonds. As you can see, first position we have one double bond, and third we have one double bond to give you a structure as buta one comma three diene. Wonderful. Now let's see. Second we have is called styrene. Always remember to put the plus sign. And we have str sty any -E styrene, and as per we know, styrene is going to be the structure. Okay, that is CH double one CH down benzene ring. After polymerization, let's see what happens. Before I write down the answer here down below, let me talk about them individually. Now, what happens is, let's say I have two buta one comma three diene monomers combined together to form a polymer. Then what happens here? Let's see. We can have here one of them. Okay, let's have one more here in front of us. And let's see how it really works. So I'm teaching you the logic behind it and also how it occurs and so you can easily learn by yourself later in the future. So from here this double bond to one bond goes here. Wonderful. One bond goes here. Find. Similarly one bond goes here and one bond goes here. And this is going to give me what? It's going to give me something like CH2. Single bond CH. Double bond. Double bond how? Because this is coming here. Double bond. CH2. Oh, see, so it's going to be CH. Okay, so you know by now how we're eating this double bond here. Single bond CH2. Again, same thing here. CH2, single bond CH, double bond because this bond is going this side, shifting that side. And there you have it. Simple and wonderful. And that's how we're going to be getting butyl from the end. And similar for styrene, you know very, very well. If we have let's say one styrene here in front of us and one more beside it like how we did for vinyl chloride this bond will simply shift here to give us CH2 double bond CH sorry it's gonna be CH2 double single bond CH down benzene ring again CH2 single bond CH and down benzene ring clear wonderful so now tell me what the product is going to be. The product is going to be one bond here, CH2, single bond CH, double bond CH, single bond CH2, CH2, single bond CH, and down a benzene ring like this way, continues and whole N. And do you have any other product like water? No. This is the answer. And for exam, write down the heading, write down the two monomer names, write down the structure with N over here, N over here, and then... Put this arrow down there, write down the answer and put whole N. You're going to get full 100 out of 100 for this particular answer. So now you have seen the Buna S example. We have one more example for copolymer and that is Buna N. It has two monomers. Number one is butyl one 3 diene and number two is vinyl cyanide or acronitro. So let's see how is this structure formed. Let's see for buna n okay what happens for buna n as the name suggests the first monomer is the same it's going to be buta 1 comma 3 diene and the n signify our second monomer that is going to be vinyl cyanide and the vinyl cyanide another name is acronitrile acronitrile simple simple so this instruction for this you already know what it's going to be it's going to be n times oops yeah n times ch2 double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch2 and we also know how we're getting it 
Now what about vinyl cyanide? It's going to be cyanide as per you know. When I say vinyl, you know it means CH2, double bond CH. Now what is cyanide? Cyanide means CN. It's going to be down as we know we're putting it down so we can easily show it up. It is single bond so keep that in mind. Single bond down CN. Wonderful. Now this thing after polymerization the process from which you get polymers from monomers we're going to be getting what you're going to be getting here ch2 single bond ch double bond ch single bond ch2 single bond ch2 then single bond ch hold down cn and then hold n understood so it just simply means that uh, this whole part is being coming from our buta one diene and this portion is coming from our vinyl cyanide. Wonderful. And that's it for bu uh, bu uh, buna and this is going to be our name. Write down the two monomers, write down the individual monomer structure with N, writing down each of them. And this is how you get the answer and with this you can get a full marks of this topic. Fine. Now one more thing you can see easily from here is that unlike polythene, and unlike polyvinyl chloride, we, we only had one of the same type of monomer joined together to give you a nice polymer. Here, like for BUNS, for example, we have 1B and we have 1V. Again, we have 1B and 1V, and that's how the bond is forming, isn't it? So here, repeating, you need won't be just B or just V. It's going to be this whole thing. This whole thing for us is going to be a repeating unit, unlike only E for this case, okay? And keep those things in mind. Now, let's move forward. So, you may also ask questions based on Buna N and Buna S by saying, explain, explain the difference between Buna N and Buna S. So, that's how you may ask questions in another way. Otherwise, simply tell you to write the structure of Buna S and Buna N. And that's how it might be. Okay, let's move on. Next comes condensation polymer. This is number two and number one. Sorry for that. Number two is our condensation polymers. So, the polymer are the form by polymerization of monomers with elimination of small molecules such as water, alcohol, acid, etc. Examples, nylon 6,6, nylon 6, dacroatylene. As I told you, for this one, when two or more monomers combine together, they are giving you polymer as well as some side product like small molecules of water, acid, and alcohol. We have seen for this 96,6, we shall see for this and this as well. Okay. Now, before we see this thing in our next coming up video, let's solve one example question. It's the first example question we're going to solve today. The question says, is CH2? CH, C6H5, whole N, a homopolymer or a copolymer. Let's write this out in more better way. That is gonna write this as let's say CH2, CH, and down C6H5. If you don't remember, this looks like very similar to our styrene, and because it's now learned under our Buna S topic, the styrene monomer is gonna be CH double bond CH and down benzene ring. So, yeah, you can clearly see that there's nothing but this one monomer forming a polymer. So, I feel like I'm sure you're feeling the same thing that this is going to be a homopolymer of styrene. Let's check the answer. The answer says yes, we are right. It is a homopolymer, and the monomer from which it is obtained is styrene, C6H5, CH double bond, CH2. Okay. So with this, we have come to the end of our part 2 video and please do check out my part 3 video as well and part 4 and part 5 and so on. And if you haven't checked out part 1 till yet, please do it. It's my request to you, my humble request to you because you're going to learn a lot and you're going to gain a very wonderful knowledge like this. And if you have watched my video till now, till this 25 minutes so far, means you have literally, you have learned it and you have loved the video. So please do give a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and see you in the part 3 we can talk about other types of classification of polymers along with the types of polymers reaction and so on it's an amazing class and trust me if you watch all my five videos of the polymers playlist you're gonna be always gonna be getting full marks for this chapter no matter what so till then keep learning and thank you so much